Hey gang, it's Maria from UltimateGoalieTraining.com and HockeyTrainingPro.com. And um, I get, I've had a few emails about this and I've also had a, seen a few questions on some of the forums that I contribute to um, asking about hip impingement in goaltenders. And this is a real issue. Um, so I want to do two things today. I want to explain a little bit of what hip impingement is and then I want to um, explain a little test you can do on yourself to maybe just see, hmm, maybe what I'm feeling actually is a hip impingement. Um, sometimes they get confused um, for like ab strains or sports hernias or, you know, some people just think, huh, you know, that's weird, I have recurring pain in the front of my hip, you know, strange, and, and on they go. So it's a pretty serious thing um, that you definitely don't want to take lightly. So here, I want to explain a couple of things. Um, there are two types of, well, there are more than two, but the two main ones are a pincer type of hip impingement and a cam type of hip impingement. So this, um, I'm not an artist, really. This is my grade four level drawing of the hip socket. Basically, this is your pelvis, this is the socket, and this is your femur. So it's a, it's a ball and socket joint like that, which is why we have you know, all the mobility that we, that we have in our hip. With a cam impingement, um, the bone here on the femur or on the ball part is kind of built up a little bit more. So not everybody's, the ball is perfectly round in everybody and, and everybody doesn't have a perfectly formed socket. So in a cam impingement, this is a little bit thicker on the bone. So you can see as you try to lift your thigh, the socket is gonna bang into this thickening on the bone and that's gonna cause some pain. With a pincer, it's just the opposite. So this socket might be a little bit deeper here, so that again, you know, if you think it when you try to lift your thigh, now the bone's smashing in here into that point of the socket. So it is a bony issue. It's not something you can stretch away. Um, they're not sure if that's if people are born with this formation or if it's something that comes with repetitive trauma. Um, that's unclear, but the big point is you can't stretch it and make it better. Um, so what we have to do is try and work around it. And if you are having some of these, um, this anterior hip pain or pain in the front of your hip when you play, it might be worthwhile going to see um, a good sport physiotherapist just to have an assessment um, to see what they think could be giving you that pain. Now I'm gonna show you a little um, way that you can evaluate um, maybe if you're having some hip impingement and then a strategy you can use when you're doing your squatting type activities. So this is a little test that you can do on yourself. It's really, really easy. It's just a quadruped rock back or a hands and knees rock back. So I'm going to have my um, toes on the floor, hands and knees, and a good uh, flat back or neutral back position. My, I'm going to start with my knees just inside hip width, and I'm going to sit back with my hips. Now really important that you don't round your back as you come down because that's going to change how much you're flexing at your hip. So I want to keep this neutral. The only movement is coming from my hip joint there. And you will probably feel one of two things. I feel a little gentle stretch in my glutes. But if you feel a little pinch or tightness in the front of your hip, if that's what's restricting this movement, then um, that's not a muscle tightness. That's something kind of impinging. So then my next step, I'm not going to panic yet, my next step is I'm going to move my knees a little bit wider and do the same thing, rocking back. Now again, I, my hips are pretty good and I just feel a little stretch back there, that's what's limiting me. But again, if you feel a tightness or a pinch in the front of your hip, that that's, could be an impingement. So then my last step is to go even wider still so my knees are wider than then hip width, and I'll rock back. Now, let's say you had some pinching in the narrow stance, some pinching in the middle, but now when you move wide, you don't feel that pinch anymore. Well then, when you're doing your squatting exercises, or your deadlift exercises, exercises where you have felt that pinch before, you're gonna take a little bit wider stance, and that's gonna let you work around that um, bony change in your hip. Um, let's say you try all those patterns and really, you know, you're okay until you get to about here. But once you try to go below there, 
then you're starting to feel that pinch again. Well, then that tells you that when you do your squatting exercises, you're going to have to just come down to, to right above where you start to feel that pinch. Do not try to jam through it or work through it. When you're squatting, the muscles that are being lengthened are in the, the back side, not the front side, so you shouldn't feel pinching in the front of your hip as you do those. So that explains a little bit about um, hip impingement is, femoral acetabular impingement is what it's called, or um, explains a little bit of a self-evaluation that you can do and some ways that you can modify your exercises. So I hope that helps, but don't take it lightly, gang, get it checked out.